So, good morning. I hope you have a good breakfast this morning. I was really... Uh, I'm After joining Samsung three years ago, I, I faced less public speaking activities, <laughs> more with engineers. So, I lead around 186 uh, engineers. We are working on building middleware, software application, and also we are doing some artificial intelligence. So... Uh, Samsung R&D is actually one of the overseas R&D center among the other 24, uh, and is the first R&D center uh, established in Indonesia. It's quite unique uh, that uh, I got invitation to speak as a keynote because I'm not consider myself actually as a agile expert. I consider myself a uh, agile survival. <laughs> 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 because uh, I s three years ago when I joined Samsung, I spent not in engineering before. Before joining Samsung, I spent 10 years in evangelism in Microsoft, mostly about technical uh, marketing or evangelism, not really engineering, right? And before I was a developer, so I always survived in my uh, job. And Samsung is actually back to engineering and I have to lead the team. Uh, lead the unmanageable team. So I consider myself more on agile survival. So we want to go towards the agile philosophy. We see many methods, many techniques. We, co we learn about it, but we also know that at the end, our people is not ready. If you run an R&D business in Indonesia, the first time I got interviewed to lead the R&D team, I said, are you crazy to make uh, R&D center in this country, right? The ecosystem is not there, it's not established there. University is not there. Uh, university not producing the, the output of the R&D. The GDP span on R&D is very less, 0.04% 0, 0, 0 compared to Singapore, 4.8% of GDP. So it's quite interesting. So in this talk, I more share my experience. Uh, I get some keywords from Quora last night and I put in slide, but I will share more the insight that I face daily as a, as a, as a team leader of uh, engineering team leader working in many team. Our team is small, small team. So we are not having like 50 people inside the team, but we have a small like five to 10 people but uh, we design them from the beginning by people-centric agility. But during the way, I feel like I scream more than scrum more. <laughs> so in this talk, I, I, I think we should, we should think that scream is part of life. Scrum is also part of life. But how we manage this to make an equilibrium state so our team can still have the same objective, uh, the same uh, uh, goals, and they can still going on. Okay, some R&D work is actually is not like project work. We don't know what is the result. <coughs> we can make a beautiful plan in slide. We can present and get funding, but we may end up with different result because it's a research, it's the discovery process. On other side, engineering project is more trivial. But the discipline of people is lack. I don't think that university in Indonesia produce students or that already mature enough to work on engineering. They don't have that experience in campus. That's why I believe all organizations should have plan to what their own agility based on their own condition. So I'm not fans of hypes or labeling things with some big words. But I faced the situation where even the first graduate, they still think like kids, right? So <laughs> very, very basic human problem. So they can focus. So we have an experiment in, in Samsung. The question was, how long time our engineer can focus on problem solving? How long time they can spend? So in Indonesia, we can say it's about one or two hours. In Microsoft, maybe they can spend three to four hours. Really focused, no disruption, no Facebook, no 
path, no social media, right? So that's the issue we have, that that's what makes me scream all the day. But now I become more calm, calm down, because I know the reality. So I will share that. So why we do scum? The first time I joined a company, some engineers come, we have to do pair programming, we have to do extreme engineering, we have to do all the buzzwords. I don't understand. I'm coming from physics background. I don't like the label of things. I like to know the meaning of things. But labeling the things with some keywords that I don't understand is really make me crazy, you know? Like, why you say waterfall is bad? It's nature, right? Water always falls because of gravitation. <laughs> <laughs> why you say, why you bring me the reason waterfall cannot work? So you have to deliver things partially, you have to break down all complexity into small, small one, and then you solve daily iteration. What are you saying? Are you building nuclear reactor with that way? Not, right? We, can, we are not building Samsung exploded battery with that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it's not by design. <laughs> Apologize, it's not by design. <laughs> But something need to be, we have to spend more time thinking about the problem, complexity, before we're running into the sprint. And this is my biggest fight the first time I joined company because I think it's not ready to go to sprint. Your people not even know uh, how to code at the first time, okay? They cannot code without internet connection. How come? So when I, take the internet connection from their laptop, they simply cannot code. Why? Because they depend too much on code in the internet, and what they do is actually copy past. How do I make label in Android uh, application? Right? How, um, and then they search, and then they get it, the and then they copy past. But can they think? As a physicist before, we don't accept that way. We accept that we have to spend time like Albert Einstein said, if I have one hour, I will spend, he said, he will spend how many minutes? 55 minutes on understanding the problem and five minutes to find solution. Because why? Because usually I don't think that they know the problem, but they mess up with the solution, right? And sometimes they accept solution without thinking because there's an easy way. The same thing with Scrum adoption. After they mess up in the kitchen of development, and then they think someone in the conference say, okay, we have new techniques, silver bullet. We can solve all problem in development, we call it Scrum. And one engineer said, in other company, we know that he will move to that company later on. We will use pair programming. And what all of this buzzword, pair programming, do you want me to pair my, my best talented engineers to new fresh graduates, right? It's not economic. So from management point of view, it will, it will spend his time for nothing. The fresh graduate has to go to academy, not to sit down with expert and spend the expert time for nothing, right? But the buzzword is too big, so they still adopt it. So not only water becoming always fall, but many other reasons why they accept Scrum without really know the agi agile philosophy, right? So they accept the concept without really know what it is. So after we fail many times, like uh, we implement Scrum and then we say, well, we need Scrum Master. Okay, let me see the spec of Scrum Master. And I said, how can I hire this spec? People who have leadership, team builder capability, technical background, business understanding, how? We don't have that people, right? So we try to survive by adopting Scrum and then try to adapt, right, by our reality. And during the adaption, of course, we scream. This cannot work. This guy is just floating in the, flo floating in the air and then do nothing but they give us pressure, but we learn. We learn each other. I will share with you some theoretical aspect that I see from this situation. 
uh, it's not it's, it's very common sense maybe you see the movie before but uh, but that's the reality so I see this all of this reason I will not go by one but one I really hate is draft I see in English uh, dictionary draft is like being foolish right so they adopt agile and to actually to avoid being draft draft is not foolish by by the way so draft means detail requirement upfront, right? So they, they reject the detail requirement upfront, but they want to stay cool by delivering things, right? But what happened is really depend to the project, the nature of the project. For example, my team is now working to deliver Telegram apps, Tyson, for example, right? What is the most complexity of instant messaging application. So we need to find at the first step what can make us fail to deliver this app. So people who are doing too agile without thinking the complexity, they will run into the screen, but they look at the, this chat room. I have a lot of features that we cannot simply deliver by using default uh, widget or default control component. We need some more advanced component. And there is no one in the team actually can design this more interactive component, like when message is more about asynchronous message coming, multi-thread, but client server inside one apps. This kind of architecture thing, we don't know. Can you imagine a team start building things without knowing the real complexity? That's draft. That is common, right? Because we feel the progress is small progress. We are not feeling the progress as a solving big problem, but uh, solving small, small, small thing. Okay. So I always challenge my team to think of why we have to do Scrum at the first time. Of course, I, you don't have to convince me that we have to do agile. Okay, even on small things, let's say, for example, I'm taking now a PhD in computer science for AI. Even in reading a book, I don't think I can survive without doing Scrum. Initial plan, this week, this chapter. Next week, this chapter. But that, in reality, maybe one chapter for three months. <laughs> because our goal is not completing the chapter, but to understand. And understanding takes a long time. Understanding cannot be rushing up. If you're rushing up with understanding, then you fail up with the project. So I believe all organizations who adopt agile philosophy, agile methodology, like Scrum or others, they will face this motivation, common motivation. If you ask your individual in the team, do you believe on Scrum? Yeah. But if you ask second question, why? You will see different answer. Right? Some of them just because I want to have Scrum certification in my CV. <laughs> Some of them, once in the, in, in the chat room, I say, why Scrum, is, uh, Scrum Master becoming very favorite? Because it has master in the title. <laughs> That's becoming very cool. Yeah? So be careful with the motivation. That's the message in this slide. So. <coughs> Why we scream? <laughs> I think as a manager of engineering manager, if you're not scream, uh, and then you maybe get uh, more disease in the future, because you're not, you cannot release. Why? Why did things happen like this? Everything you're asking for weekly report, yeah, from the team, is actually not what really happened. Weekly report is manufactured because they want to get a good perception from the manager, right? Weekly report is not actual. What is the actual in software development? Is actually the code itself. But how many engineering manager can do code review? Can they see, right? This is a very big mistake that we made before, that we assume our team can code good way. Wrong assumption. So suddenly there is an initiative, global initiative in Samsung that we need to certify our engineers in the way we believe. 
we certified on engineering capabilities on problem solving. So every month now, we have algorithm tests in office. We really test. If you can code, then you can solve problem, right? And then we, we make a intermediate level, advanced level, professional level, expert level algorithm. We believe that is the basic kata we have, like in karate or in martial art, right? Because that's the way we do it every day. We don't invest too much, for example, on framework. It changes all the time. But we find what is fundamental for our team, and then we invest on it. That's the way we survive. Otherwise, code quality is far behind. Code quality is not coming from, from process. Code quality coming from the brain of the developers when they start to write code, right? So many, many defects coming in software, especially commercial software, it's not because of the process, because something in the code uh, vulnerable or something in the code is not well tested. They are not performing static analysis. They are not performing security check in the code. They are not performing many things. So they miss the point. So the reality that makes me scream all the day, I also list this here. Management, even we are in management, it's very hard to be in the same, in the same page, right? One has different priority, another has different priority. And it's very hard because all of the actually uh, management uh, uh, priority is quite different, right? So support for engineering usually very low, but I, I like to see the trend in Indonesia because many companies now believe in agility. So many companies in management level also start to invest the readiness of the people, and that's a good trend because that's the way to survive from Scream. The other is uh, bad implementation because they believe on myth, right? I believe in many religions, religious countries, people believe myth more than logic. So if they, if they believe things just by accepting it without looking on the reality, so that's, start to come, uh, that's the source of the bad implementation. They say, we have to do standing, we, uh, daily standing. Of course, yeah. If you have a good requirement that's split it out, backlogs, right? And then you know how to do it, how to execute it, and you discuss in the morning how uh, with your team and then execute it daily. We do it every day. Before we come to the office to do something, we do the checklist, right? Checklist management. Usually I use sticky note, I put in my monitor, this is have to be done today. But what about if I have five people have different checklists? What to be done today? So it's checklist management, right? Now renamed with Scrum or SDLC or it's checklist management, right? In a very structured way, in formal way, formalized way. Okay. So, but we s it's not that easy. External pressure. When we launch apps for Samsung, for example, the deadline is there. The launch time. S8 is coming. S9 is coming. S10 is coming. It's fixed. Right? But we still have to deliver something on that. How we can survive? We have to have continuous delivery. Value has to be built until we can release something on that day. Of course, it's not perfect, but we can still survive it that way. Right? So agile is the way. But external pressure, very hard. I don't think it's trivial. Every manager has spent time because of this pressure. Communication problem, organization problem, chaotic realities of being human, because still human, two engineers still human. It's not machine doing the things, right? So some chaotic things can happen like, this guy have a lot of problem at home coming to the office, right? His mood is not good, and then he's screwing up the team because of that. He's very chaotic, very probabilistic in nature. So we don't, I don't think that this, things can be eliminated. We have to deal with Scream. No way, right? So Scrum we have to do, because that is a structured way, right? But Scream is reality that we need to deal with it. So if we just say, I want to be agile like, like this without doing the, the method that really implemented in the team, for me, yeah, I like this quote. It's like uh, teaching chess without teaching checkmate. <laughs> You're teaching that this has to be go like this. This has to be go like this, right? This peon, this blah, blah, blah. But you don't expect checkmate. And suddenly, someone smarter than you, check you, die. Okay? 
So I always try to simplify things by my own understanding I share to my team. And this is what I see of this problem. What really ever happened? So there's two things. I don't think we understand complexity. So we may solve different problems every day. We may spend energy time with something that is not necessary. Because of this, we don't understand technical complexity. We don't understand our people complexity, right? As a manager, I rarely see Indonesia can produce good managers. The market, the ecosystem, the legacy. There is no big industry that can, let's say billion dollar industry is coming now, maybe three years, right? Now we have that pressure, big pressure to deliver something, right? It cannot fail. But previously, IT industry coming from people who are doing SI business, right? So if I ask manager, do you really understand your people? Usually they have less communicated. They don't talk to their people. They feel they take the for granted the authority, but they don't talk, they don't care. Right? So this makes a big problem because people work for other people. They fight for their friends. They fight for, uh, sometimes they hate the company, but they, f they, they fight for the friends. So <coughs> people complexity, for me, is more because technical complexity, once you read papers, you read books, you read articles, how to, it's all there. But people complexity is too probabilistic in nature. You have to spend time with team if you are a manager. You have, to sp you have to look on their side. What is their motivation? What is their internal? What is their external pressure? And then you have to make them work. That's the job of manager. It's not make yourself glory or something, right? So, but the reality we found in Indonesia, we don't have good manager usually. But Indonesian engineers very, will be very good if they are working with good managers who can glue them, who can give purpose bigger than, bigger than their self as an individual. So that's what we believe. So I will cover more of this uh, technical complexity and people complexity. But the second is, if you ask all the team, engineering team, what is your engineering truth? What is the law that you will say, I accept that by heart? Right? The engineering truth. If you talk to engineer, well, they learn Angular JS. Oh, this is the best framework. Why you said that? By two, three questions, you cannot accept the answer. Just because someone has said so, it's not it's not doesn't mean that it's good. Right? So they spend less, but they accept they accept the, the opinion or assumption and then they make their own. But they don't have engineering truth. So for us in Samsung, we defined it from the beginning, our culture. We say our culture is summarized as fast. It's not about speed, but it's about focus, alignment, scientific, and talent. All we do translated to fast. We first, we want to be focused. So we measure our team. At that time, we use tools like Pomodoro, make sure the team can focus at least one, two hours problem solving. The rest they can communicate, right? So our software certification test, algorithm test, we design it to spend like two to four hours. If you problem solving in mathematics or say, you really spend your energy, so we train them to make them ready problem solving, right? Because we believe that this engineering truth, our engineering culture should be scientific knowledge and craftsmanship experiments, right? We learn from our experiment, we get feedback, we learn, we measure, but we don't accept any hypes, any normal syndrome or <laughs> anything that is not fit to our team. So we learn, for example, Scrum, we learn. We learn the, the iteration, we learn how to build the, the team, etc. the role and model of the Scrum. We learn, we improve, we learn, improve all the time, but we don't accept Oh, because this one said so, and we, dis we do like that, because maybe our team is not ready. Maybe simply because they don't believe the way we do, we ask them to do. After many years in engineering, let's say, do you think people, uh, engineering or coders, do things because the manager said so? They must believe the way. If they don't believe the way, they will ignore. Okay? 
So we are problem driven, not process. So by the problem, we understand the problem, then we adopt the process. There is a lot of books in Agile. So we, when we have problem, usually I, I read the books and then I say, oh, this is, this is what people do. This is what people do and we try. If we fail, we improve, right? So we do experiment. We not accept the uh, other people's opinion. And engineering, our engineering truth is uh, to engineer is still human. So you have to look down on human deeply. This guy is good in algorithm. This guy is not really good, but he is really good in construction. No one can compete him doing the same thing, many things. And then we combine it, make a gamification to make them enjoy the process, right? So individually we measure, we know our people a uh, good thing by usually by doing the informal discussion, coffee chat in the morning. So we, as a manager, I always ask my manager, spend time with your people. Talk to them, right? Not only about the code or about the organization, about the company, but talk to them, anything. Right? Make them as your friends. Because most of people do things more because they are friends. In Indonesia, it's a very social country, right? Instead of other purpose. So technical complexity, I can spend a lot of time talking about this. Uh, but uh, actually, I like the von Neumann, what he said. If you insist that something machine cannot do, and if you can tell me, he said, what precisely machine cannot do, then I can build it. The problem is we cannot tell what machine cannot do. Right? Ten years ago, you can't imagine speech technology can happen in small device like this. Because it requires modeling, neural networks, things, stuff for recognition of the spectrum of the wavelength. And then to make the prediction, you need a big model, cannot run in this machine. But this machine was my server 15 years ago in production room, this machine, right? So now you can talk, you can do OCR, real-time OCR, you can do translation, you can do many things. This machine is not a stupid machine anymore, right? If you have Samsung S8, it has Bixby, it's intelligent inside the device. So you can't imagine that before, but now we can do it. Why? Because we believe this philosophy. We cannot build that because we cannot say something that precisely what the machine cannot do. Right? So it's translated to requirement. If you make good requirement, clear enough, not to not have to be very precise, right? but clear for the team, then you must be able to build the things. But the other way around, when the requirement, some guy still, uh, I don't know how to make this. And then you still run the sprint, right? And then they make a intermediate solution that can crash later on because it's not, it's just intermediate solution. That's, that's happened many times, okay? So in, in, in our, my organization, we, we split our, we, our, our fear of technical problem always content of these two specific things. First is foundational. This is a must. We cannot outsource this foundational learning for the team. So we build our own internal academy. We pick the best book, the best online course we can get. We make our own material and then we deliver to our team. We find the best engineer who can teach. Okay? We don't really invent material. Don't do that. It takes a long time. Okay, you can get it easily in Udemy or in Coursera or whatever you, you, right? But you have to deliver it in the team so they can be in par with foundational knowledge that the operating system. Many people say they understand it. I don't think so. Many people say I'm good in programming language, but you can ask very simple question in the language they may miss, right? Because this they learn in not a structured way. We believe in Samsung that we cannot outsource this. We cannot let them do by themselves without measurement. So we have internal academy. Onboarding process for our engineers always goes to this foundational. Domain specific, of course, experience, right? 
But as I mentioned before, the legacy of this country is not engineering country. So if you ask how many times, how long time you experience in software development, and they say, okay, 10 years. My first feedback was, are you learning for three months and repeat the experience for 10 years? Or what? Right? So usually if you really look on the engineering, maybe they learn PHP or Android three months after graduates. They never learn after that because they think that learning is only in school, not a daily basis. Then you mess up. You will end up having a team with good CV, but have almost zero learning capability. That's a big nightmare for me when we face the situation. Okay? They always <laughs> talk about big words, <laughs> something new like design pattern. This is I hate much <laughs> because, uh, because I don't think that the code uh, should be manufactured like that. Okay? The code is still craftsmanship, it's still product of an uh, of, uh, of, uh, intelligent man. So foundational, we're not outsourcing, we build internal capability, we measure. Domain specific, we learn it. Okay? Domain specific, we, we learn it, you can read papers, books, you can benchmark application if you want to do. Nothing in software development, for example, very less. You only the one who built that software. Name it, logistic system. By searching Google or and then you can make benchmark. What is their features, blah, blah, blah. Just do s benchmarking, right? But we are too lazy to do, and then we try to invent, and then we fail, okay? So domain specific, we are not investing a lot because I, uh, we think that this is, should be ongoing process, okay? But foundational, we need to invest. So people complexity, I, I believe I will skip this one because it's a very, uh, but, <laughs> It's very internal and sometimes external, and, but the external part is really affecting the people. Okay? So when interview people, you can assess that, but after they join, it's really probabilistic. It can change. Okay? What happens is because they believe their friend more than their managers. So when their friend moves to other companies, say, hey, this company is better than this. And then they move also. And why you make decision because your friend said so? Right? So I faced like hundreds exit interview. <laughs> now I don't want to spend more time in exit interview just asking and then thank you and then, okay? Why? Because that's, because I don't think they make a good career plan and their career decision is based on conscious decision. Their decision usually infected or influenced by other people. So, <coughs> so people-centric uh, strategy. Because I have less time, so let's move forward. So people-centric strategy, I believe before you do everything in, in process-wise to achieve agility, to, to you have to establish well the people strategy. I spend most of my time hiring. I don't outsource hiring. I interview all engineers in my team. Because I think bad hire will cost me 40% of the project failure. I have to know them individually. So interview process in us is I spend very serious, I design the question, I want to know them more, especially learning capability. It's usually my special words is, I don't, I don't care what you know, in what you know, I care how you know. Because when they are in school, usually they are actually want to graduate faster than others. They don't want to understand. So whatever they know is obsolete. But you will be surprised that Indonesia produced people who are hungry to learn better than any other country. Why? Because they never experienced good learning. <laughs> so if your company provides learning foundation, good learning foundation, they will respect. At least they will stay for three to five years. Organization culture. Culture is not something that management say in the company meet. Well, we, we have to do this, we have to do this, blah, 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 blah. But reality, well, it's not implemented. Culture is something that daily basis we do, okay? Onboarding process. After they get hired, HR usually done with administration. And then this new manager left the people in the corner. Nobody talked to them. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling lonely, right? So, 
So we are very serious in onboarding process because we think it's very important for engineers to be onboarding with the team. They have to know the people they work with, they have to know the foundational knowledge that we require, etc. So we have technical onboarding and we have soft skill onboarding ongoing for three months. If we decide not to continue, usually now what happens is they're more happy because after they join Samsung for three months and then they get out, they get better job outside. People are in R. Very simple theory, R and R, role and responsibility. But do you think that you design R and R based on people capability? Or based on jargons? Right? So we are not doing that. We design R and R as a people capability base, not with the jargon. And some team maybe have different R and R. Some another team have different R and R. Proven capabilities. So we make sure that our people have a journey to make the proven capabilities and also measurement uh, on their competence. We measure it. We don't accept they say, hey, that, good, that man is very good in programming. He can type like lights, speed of light, without lamp, without any. So that's magic, you know? But we don't believe that. So reward incentive, structured continuous learning, rhythm of communication among the team. Really important, team building and reorganization. Some team, if they are too long together, they start to build their kingdom, right? <laughs> they start to be in their own kingdom. So I always encourage to, to change. So one time they work in middleware, next they work in Android project, next they work in data. So they always have good challenge every time. So the source of agility. I really like uh, John Ness. So how actually, what happens is the best for the group comes if everyone in the group does what's best for himself and for the organization or for the group. But John Ness has more insight than this. So if you watch a Beautiful Mind movie, right? The guy who are, looks like crazy. Hey, he's crazy that time. So. He have a very good theory in, in, he started in economics, so in game theory, he said about NAS equilibrium. So this is my view of the software development. So I see this a non-cooperative game. You never be able to make a team of software development as a fully harmony and cooperative. Never, that's only happening in heaven. Right? <laughs> because business and technical uh, priorities always not in harmony, right? I work in sales before, so I really understand the behavior. In Microsoft, if it's about number, hmm, no harmony, right? So I see this, like NAS see this, uh, non-cooperative game of two or more players, but at the end, we have to share the same objective, right? For the, com the good of the company, for the optimization of the company, or for whatever the shared objective of all of these players, whatever their strategy, but they have to do that. They have to share same objective. But each has e equilibrium strategy, right? But they don't have to keep the strategy from themselves. They have to inform others. This is my strategy. You have to be open. Without openness, you will see that they try to trick us. They try to do something for their benefits, right? So in NAS equilibrium, you have to share, inform others about your strategy. It's about corporate communication. And then no players has anything to gain or benefit by keeping their own strategy for themselves, for their group, okay? And then equilibriums uh, can happen, NAS say, in any system, right? So it's not has to be cooperative, but can be non-cooperative, but they playing each other, right? So they can reach uh, equilibrium, yeah? So this is back to the scrum and scream. I think we should make a team, right? That contains scrum and scream, but somehow scrum players and scream players reach NAS equilibrium, okay? That's still productive. That's the theory, what uh, said in the theory, and I believe it this way. So I will keep my team who are still complaining, as long as they're in NAS equilibrium. <laughs> but that is hard. 
you learn game theory like I do. I have to do my thesis, PhD thesis on game theory, approximation theory, all of this theory. So finding Nash equilibrium is non-trivial problem, especially if you are dealing with man, a human, right? It's very chaotic, probabilistic in nature. So I think it's a hard problem. Need continuous learning. Don't accept any hypes or things, but you have to look on situation. You have to talk to people and then, and then understand more. And then as a manager, you can make a proper action to reach your nice equilibrium in the organization. So in summary, I have very less time. So, so as a summary of my talk, uh, first is encourage Scrum and Scream. Don't kill Scream, okay? Because you have to have a nice equilibrium. If you have only one player, not really good. Second is to engineer is still people-centric. Make sure that you have good people manager in your team. That's key success. Third is the source of agility is nice equilibrium. It's not to be, you don't have to be harmony all the time, but you all as a team, you share the same objective, you optimize that objective, you do it together, you share your strategy, you talk to each other to make sure the goal is achieved. And five is, all we think we do in software domain, it needs continuous thinking and improvement. Okay, so that is the summary and takeaways. I hope my talk can can inspire you or or thinking. Again, I don't really know some agile things, but as I mentioned, I'm agile survival. So if we still have more time, we can have a discussion or Q and A after this. Thank you.